This is a short video clip to demo my brushes. I have two dabbers, a small and a medium dabber. I mainly use these brushes to paint in my light and dark values and to blend. This is my floral brush, and these are all specialty brushes. This has a very, very flat chisel edge that I use for painting fur in my bird and for painting the hydrangeas and geraniums with this stroke of this petal. Now, what I'm doing first, I'm working first of all with Deco Arts acrylic colors. I have three colors that I use on my leaves at all times. This leaf is based in with antique green. My shade color that I use is black green and my light value is celery green. Now, I also work with Joe Sonia's Retarder, which is made by Chroma. I'm first dipping my fl uh, flat brush, and I'm going to dampen this leaf that I have just base coated with the antique green. And it is dry. And I'm just making it wet again. By doing this, it makes you think that the leaf is still wet from the antique green. It's sort of a wet-on-wet -wet motion. I'm going to be working right now with my medium dapper. On most of my um, pattern packets or patterns, I always indicate where shadows go or dark value goes by a cross hatching, and usually where the light value goes with dots. I'm loading my medium dapper into black green, and I want to place this black green where the dark value is going to be up into this leaf and sometimes you get too much retarder just give it a quick blot and that's what I did and you need to see that so I'm going to start that over with my dark value placing it here right up that vein and join I want to place a little bit in this little curve and this curve of my leaf and in this little curve and this little curve then I want to fill in the tip of this leaf with the dark value because it is dripping, um, kind of dripping down, and I want to indicate that. When I wipe my brushes, I pull the brush through and lightly pinch it to remove excess paint, which is what you always want to do. Now I'm rubbing on the side of this brush to blend that dark value into my antique green. I am not jabbing down straight. If you do that, you're going to end up with a brush that looks like some kind of foreign fan brush. So try to always think I am lightly rubbing. And I've said this many times and I'll repeat it. I should have named these Nancy Kenny's rubbers. They probably would have sold a lot better than a dabber would have. But I'm going to put a little more dark up in here. And again, you can see by the values here, this has been added on to uh, gotten darker, especially under the bird. The dark is here and here. Now I'm going to slide in a vein. And as I do that, I want it to back up and say, I'm going to let this curve, way the leaf curves, wipe the brush out, always continue to wipe, blend in it, back up into the leaf a little bit and I'm just going to come back down and soften that and let it gently curve and lift off. Now the next color I'm going to do would be my light value. Now if I wanted to build these colors up like you see in these other leaves that we just talked about, I would allow this to dry, dip and uh, dampen it again with a retarder and repeat the same thing that I'm telling you now. My first light value is going to be celery green, and I'm going to place some here. As you can see, I've done here and here and here and here. Wipe off my excess paint before I blend. Now I'm lightly rubbing and softening that light value into that damp retarder. And this is just an alternative for me in floating. Wipe my brush. I like the softer look I get with this technique. Uh, it works well for my wildlife and all of the um, 
bird's eye paint and I'm going to put a little bit more so you can see that again. Now to dab, I can dab that a little bit to spread it out and to make it strong. Then wipe that off and begin to add touches of slightly rubbing. And then this side again. And I can let it dry. And we're going to assume it is. I'm pushing this and it has been redampened. I can add more dark here if I need it. And blend back up in exactly where I need it. Now I can further lighten it with a touch of light buttermilk right on top of this while it's wet. And I'm just going to dab it. Wipe my brush. Lightly blend. Again, I'm using my medium dabber. And I'm going to soften. Now when I get my leaves like I want them, I look at them a couple of days and then I may come back and redo that by dampening it and adding darkness again. Next I'm picking up a little bit of Deep Burgundy by Deco Art, just to give this a little bit of color, a fallish look leaf with my bird. I don't want to add um, that color into my light value and I don't want to get much in my dark. You want to keep that in your medium value or you'll end up with a little bit of a pinky color. And I use all colors, not just deep burgundy. Now to quickly show you on my bird, how I use my floral brush. I'm going to dampen his breast and his tail area. And I'm picking up the uh, floral brush and light buttermilk on the chisel edge. And I'm using the chisel edge to really build up his tummy area and his chest. I can add some here and really get him fat and fluffy. And I can do this with any animal I paint and it works really well. Now down here looking at this stroke you can see that I have taken my brush, flattened it out in deep burgundy, picked up a little bit of light buttermilk on the tip and I'm going to make that stroke and I press and that's how I do my hydrangeas. Now if you'd like more information on this, and I hope this has helped you to see how I use my brushes, please feel like you can email me or give me a call, and I know that most of you know how to reach me. I thank you for watching this, and I hope this helps to remind you how to use the brushes and try it. My motto is don't worry all the time about trying to float. Just have fun and enjoy painting. Mainly you're after your dark, medium, and light values in your leaves or any subject that you paint. Thank you for watching.